When my grandfather, author and NRK journalist Jan Otto Johansen, passed away in 2018, I decided to honor his memory by looking into the written legacy he left behind. My attention fell on his book Romania, written in 1980, and so began my journey to this country on the Black Sea coast. My name is Christopher Baltasar, and this is my journey to Romania. I've been living in Romania's capital city, Bucharest, for more than five years now. Looking back at it all, it is reasonable to suggest that destiny must have had a hand in it. I met my girlfriend here, and our daughter Lily was born here, now almost four years old. So far, this country has never stopped to amaze me. You literally find native people of all colors and complexity here. Over and over again, I have thought to myself that this is one of the most inspiring reasons as to why I enjoy living in this country so much. Because of the diversity, as it is current and contemporary, but also attesting to the vast and rich past. You actually only need to look at a map of the world and it becomes evident why this land has always been a geopolitical hotspot and melting pot of cultures and traditions. The first day of filming in Timisoara. The streets, the buildings and the vibe are completely different from what I've been used to in Bucharest. Roaming through the squares, the wide boulevards, admiring the Art Nouveau architecture discovering Timisoarans as calm and warm people. I found my way to the center of Timisoara, right in front of the Opera House. Beautiful square here. Here I met up with Christian Rudik, the director of the Romanian Opera in Timisoara. I have never talked to a real knight before. Christian is one since 2003, when he was awarded the Cultural Merit of Romania in the rank of knight. I did, however, trust my intuition before the meeting and came dressed like nobility, wearing the finest garments my suitcase had to offer. Christian is one of the most famous baritones in Romania and collaborated with orchestras from Austria, Germany, Spain and Japan. He's an imposing figure, a true baritone with a great sense of humor. For me it's the Grand Zero, I call it the opera. Uh, they call it nowadays the palace of culture. You see in Timisoara the wonderful thing is the opera is facing the Orthodox Cathedral. Yes, it's been and uh, It's really beautiful, one of uh, the holy places of the city. Uh -huh, because, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I say it probably arrogant that our <laughs> stage is an altar too. No, that's a beautiful place. That's beautiful place. Let's try to make a tour inside. Yes, that would be great. As you see, it's a normal theater in in dark red and gold and I just adore that. Yeah, this is beautiful. On the ceiling you see scenes from Romanian uh, mythology and history. If you go in a country like in the States or I know in France uh -huh. and you tell them you are your blood is Serb German but you have a Romanian passport uh -huh. and you're born on the Hungarian border yes. he will understand nothing. I see. But you have to think that in this case history with geography yeah. moved borders in a generation sometimes three times. Mm -hmm. The man in the street in Timisoara 50 years before, 40 years before, 30 years before spoke about four languages. Mm -hmm. I speak badly Hungarian, I speak German, I speak Romanian, mm -hmm. but every native in Banat mm -hmm. spoke two, three. This very place it's important yeah. not only for Timisoara, it's important not only for Romania and for Romanians, it's important for our, our sacred Europe. They came here to kind of proclaim it, the yes. victory of... Yeah, uh, it was not a victory, it was the beginning of the, the fight beginning. against ah. the regime. They were here with the proclamation. And here was the crowd and there were tanks. Wow tanks down here? There are bullets there, still in the building. Oh, that is, wow. There are bullets. Wow, the, other cool. one, the other ones are repaired. Yes. But there are real bullets. This is not part of the opera, but what do you see in front of us here? This, uh, is, it, this is, is it an installation where people can go upstairs? This there, is yeah. built uh, with the occasion of the capital, culture and capital in Ishara. Mm -hmm. And uh, like uh, all symbols, it has to speak for itself, I can't put it in words, yes, but I hope yes. one day it will be green and <laughs> yes. we will be happy yeah. and you get tired and, until you get up. If you do that four times a day, you live longer, for sure. <laughs>
good point. So it's healthy. Good point. You can't explore a city on an empty stomach. And with a recommendation by the air, I went down to Little Hanoi. This is the new multiculturalism of Timisoara. You won't easily find a Hungarian restaurant in the city, even if the largest ethnic community here is Hungarian. But genuine Vietnamese cuisine is not a problem. Thanks to the pair behind the authentic culinary experience, husband and wife Raswan Pata and Min, who was kind enough to dine with me. Raswan is an engineer from Timisoara who was sent by his company to Vietnam. There he met Min, whom he brought to Romania, where they got married. He asked me what is my dream. Mm -hmm. And I told him that uh, I would like to have uh, one Vietnamese restaurant. I also love to make food. Yeah. And uh, I also love to make, uh, I can't call it Thai food or this food, but I, I love the, all the ingredients, you know, the galangal and, uh, ah, yeah. and the, the spice and the coriander and everything. It's uh, always. You know, it's one of the most favorite kitchens for me in the, in the world. Have Healthy. you tried for a soup before? Very famous. No, I haven't. Uh, Would you like to try? Yes, please. Yeah. Would you I like see. some spicy? Yes, please. I'm uh, yeah, Yes, I like spicy stuff. Enjoy the meal. <laughs> mm, you like some lemon much. also? Wow. Ah, in Vietnam, we, lemon, uh, yeah. we also serve with lemon. Wow. Yeah, in Vietnam, we put a little bit of uh, lemon, like a uh, heavy <laughs> breakfast. Ah, for you, it's heavy. Well, I, I guess heavy. it's not so heavy. Bread I mean, and sausage I mean, and bacon, ham is egg and heavy. bacon and bread. And <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. heavy. It was a moment. Uh, From here, I went to get to know the small Jewish community in Timisoara. Luciana Friedman, president of the Jewish community of Timisoara, was waiting for us at the headquarters in the historic center of the city. She introduced us to the center's leisure room, where some of the Jewish veterans had gathered to socialize and insisted that I engage in a session of board game Scrabble with them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, growing up with them and how, how Romania has changed today. Eu sunt născut chiar în timpul bombardamentelor americanilor în Timișoara. Pe 10 iunie 1944, americanii au bombardat gara mare, fiindcă au fost... Au fost Vagoanele cu, cu nemții care se trăgeau și trebuia să-i bombardeze. Am copilărit în cartierul evreiesc cu evrei, români, sârbi, bulgari, toate naționalitățile care au fost în Timișoara. Am avut ca copii, am fost împreună. În Timișoara, în centru, era un romanian cuartă cu some very rich families of Jews and they, they had very beautiful houses and they rent apartment and so on it was very uh, very rich uh, night life you know uh -huh. they go to opera they go mm -hmm. to the restaurant mm -hmm. they go every uh, and my mother she was frequented uh, the club yes yes and uh, they <laughs> spill uh, roulette Ah, like uh, this. <laughs> Sweet and kind elders of the Jewish quarter greeted me into their prayer room, where, to my utter delightful surprise, I was offered a bottle of homemade tsuika, clandestinely so, right in front of the altar and the holy scrolls. If that was not a divine intervention, then I don't know. Mmm, fucking good shot. <laughs> Finally, I was anointed a visit to the Citadel Synagogue, a newly restored marvel, and reopened both for prayers and for tourists. Can you tell me? I see a lot of blue in you know the Jewish uh, tradition in the flag, and what's the what does the blue represent? The blue is coming uh, also on the flag. I think it's very much included in the praying shawl in Talit. If you know the, the Jewish men have a uh, worshipping uh, shawl ah, yes. called ah. Talit. Uh -huh. And uh, this has some blue lines on it. Uh, and also, you know, very connected with uh, spirituality, with uh, the sky. We had to remake everything, actually. From the patterns floor. and... Uh... Yes. Wow. We had the pattern up, 
How long have you been working on this? Uh, in here, yeah. in this particular area, from September. September. Wow. Yeah. Just this area. This is such a this meticulous. You, yeah. you, you, this kind of a brush. <laughs> 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 yeah, we have a lot of work to do. Good luck on your uh, great uh, adventure here. Uh, thank you. Great mission. The day ended at the headquarters of the controversial artist Barak. Here I discovered another world, an artist collective that resembles the squatters of Western European countries. Paul Baraka, the mastermind behind it all, is effectively living the life of an eccentric genius. The Baraka building where I visited is both the workshop and also his private quarters where he lives together with an army of parrots. His works? Impossible to define in a specific box or frame of definition. It's pure madness and pure genius at the same time. Over the years, the Barakas have shocked at almost every public appearance. Hey, Paul. Hey. Thank you so much for uh, inviting you in, in here to your uh, private quarters. I'm just um, blown away by uh, being in there, looking in your studio, uh, looking at all your art, the paintings, the sculpture, and. Oof, I have so many questions, but I know you're very busy, so I will try to keep it uh, short. But um, maybe you can explain a little bit of what, what the meaning of your art is, the, the expression, the meaning of your expression. Eu consider că m-am m-am născut într-o țară foarte religioasă și într-o familie poate și mai și mai religioasă. Și de aici de aici pornește de fapt uh, întreaga sevă a, a artei a arte mele. Sentimentul zădărniciei vieții însă și față de realitatea morții uh, și față de realitatea singurătății cosmice decisive, de aici a, a apărut întreaga uh, uh, influență în, în, în a, a, arta mea. How do you how do you see yourself as an artist in with your work and uh, based on also the kind of meaning of your art? Uh, for uh, a very hard hard uh, question. <laughs> da, eu nu știu nimic despre piață, nu cunosc nimic despre vânzări. Eu trăiesc la limita existenței, cât mai pot să produc, produc și după dacă cumva universul consideră că uh, ceea ce fac eu este prea eretic pentru lumea asta și n-am să mai pot să fac, am să mă călugăresc și mă mut la muntele Atos. Vorbesc cât se poate de serios, nici nu... Dar în rest nu mă interesează galerii, nu mă interesează piață de artă, nu mă interesează absolut nimica în afară de ce se întâmplă în camera asta și un pic afară cât mai sculptez eu. The next day, early in the morning, I met with Mayor Dominic Fritz. The first thing that struck me with Dominic was his young age. I somehow expected to meet an old man with a serious face and a seasoned belly. But realizing he was even younger than me, immediately lowered the bar of nervousness. Dominic was born in Germany. He grew up in a fairly small village with his seven siblings. His life took a turn at the age of 16 when he won a scholarship offered by the German parliament that would initiate him onto the path to later become a politician and ultimately an elected leader. Dominic Fritz arrived in Timisoara, Romania in 2003. Initially, he was a volunteer at the Center for Underprivileged Children of the Caritas Foundation. And since then, he has never wanted to return to Germany. First of all, thank you for taking time in what must be a very busy schedule for you. It, it is, it is. And uh, Timisoara is worth it to, to tell you a bit about our, our great city. What's important to know about Timisoara is that it has gone through all different kinds of uh, rulers let's let's say it was we had over a hundred years of turkish uh, occupation it was part of uh, the austro-hungarian empire um, since 1919 it's part of romania and um, but through all, throughout all these times uh, there was one thing that was constant there was always a population made up of many different ethnicities that obviously yes. have you know changed throughout the years but that lived together in peace 
a mix of cultures and perspectives and architecture um, has always generated lots of new ideas. Uh, and so yeah. Timisoara was always a city um, that invented things that was a little bit more courageous than others. We were one of the first cities in Europe that had electric street lighting when the rest of Europe, they were all afraid oh, that yeah. the city was, would explode. Timisoara said, let's, let's do it. And I think because Timisoara has always been open to this kind of cultural exchange, uh, it's really fitting that, that we are uh, the European capital absolutely, of culture this yeah, year. Absolutely. We can all share some common values and a common heritage, although we're very different. And obviously, yeah, yeah. you know, there's a huge difference between Norway and Romania. Yeah. But then talking with you, we maybe discover, wow, here in Tijuana, yeah. we discover there's lots of things that we have in common. And these yeah. things that we have in common can be called European. Yeah. My idea of the meeting was that we would walk randomly around yeah, town, okay. but Mr. Fritz had planned it otherwise. And to my joyful surprise, we suddenly ended up at our intended destination, the Sai Cafe in the old town of Timisoara. You're all friends. It is, after all, the 8th of May, and we were fortunate enough to be invited by a group of 40 Ukrainian women for a chat. He's a journalist from Norway oh, and, uh, and, uh, and making a movie about Timisoara. And so, and especially about the different uh, ethnic ethnic groups that live in Timisoara and cultures. So for uh, Ukrainians coming to Romania, it's a neighboring country. It's um, the culture. It's, it's similar for you, or uh, a daily life. There are a lot of people here from Odessa or area around Odessa, for example, and a lot of more, uh, a lot of people from Moldova living in Odessa. So they know a lot about culture, about the food, da, 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 da. some tips, traditions. And the architecture of uh, Timisoara actually very much resembles Odessa somehow. Oh, yes? Yeah, well, that's what they say. And, um, about what is your film actually? Please. The lady wants to. It's um, very much about my journey to Romania in many ways. I live in Romania now for five years. And also, my, my, um, my grandfather, he, uh, he, he was a journalist. Uh, he was here in the 70s and 80s. Who was this journalist? And he wrote a book on Romania in 1980. So he wrote this one. Uh, and uh, I mean, it's again, it's Norwegian, but you see here some photos on how it was. Yeah. No, he, he passed in 2018. So part of me coming to Romania also was I was investigating his after he passed. I, I was starting to do, investigate his work a little bit. And, uh, well, thank you so much for meeting you. Uh, it was a pleasure to meet you too. Walking around in Timisoara is like going around the Eastern European Tower of Babel. You hear different languages, you see various historical and cultural places, and meet with people coming from all over the world. I'm, you know, curious about what other foreigners see about Romania? What, what made you come to Romania? Why? Yeah. Uh, actually, Roma, uh, Romania, Timisoara city is very beautiful. Yes. A lot of uh, uh, beautiful uh, space yes. and uh, tourist, uh, place. tourist place and beautiful search. Uh -huh. uh, this one, uh, this one, this one. Yes. yes. You come to Romania to work or to, uh, to holiday yeah. or uh, to work? Work uh, or Work, but uh, today is my holiday. Very good. Uh, that's very why good. Uh, <laughs> nice. outside. So what, what do you what do you work with, chef? In, uh, in uh, I'm a uh, professional pizza chef. Our uh, planning uh, is stay in uh, Timisoara. Yes. Inshallah. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> yes. To stay here. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. to stay here. To meet a uh, meet a wife. Uh, Romania's people. Every people is very good. So 
I stay here. Ah, good. Everybody. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. <laughs> yes, photo. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, photo. <laughs> and you have yeah, the opera and many buildings from uh, Casa Brook. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very nice tradition in Romania. You have where you celebrate in the spring. Yeah. The coming of spring. That's uh -huh. how we celebrate it. Yeah. Maybe I can have a little daughter. She's three years old, and she's quite tall, so she's uh, yeah, okay. four years old. Uh... So you definitely need something for music. Wow, that looks yeah. really cool. And um, <laughs> that's good. yeah, uh, they're made. Uh, the The new collection is made uh, together with an artist from a Romanian artist that li that lives in Berlin and. Uh, mm. He made all the, the prints, the patterns. This is really nice. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, the colors are so bright. And they come in many sizes. And uh -huh. It's not serious. It's not no. producing the... No, it's the opposite. Yes. And maybe the opposite of the mall. Of yes. Of visit to the mall. Yes. Where, yeah. That's refreshing. Yeah. I, uh, I like... Oh. And I like to avoid... Nothing against <laughs> the mall. No, no, I know, I know. Friends, yes, but, yes, yes, you know, yes. Maybe Sometimes you need something else. Yes, exactly. I teamed up with Enisei Pisica, a Roma transgender artist. Passionate about theater and rap, he is involved in numerous civic activism projects for minority rights. He has graduated from the Faculty of Theater in Timisoara, writes poetry about his experiences and how he sees the world. Oh. Cam atât. Nu mi se pare greu. Aș, ar, ar fi fost greu dacă nu aș fi putut să ies din dulap, dacă aș fi avut părinți care nu m-ar fi acceptat. Dar atâta timp cât familia mea mă acceptă așa cum sunt, eu sunt fericit cu asta. You being from here, you obviously you, your story, life story has a lot of uh... I would imagine it has a lot of uh, value for others to, you know, to learn from, yes? But it's still hard for you to get to perform it, huh? Yep. Bureaucracy. Uh, why, is it, why is it like this? Cumva, mie, capitala culturală, ca artist, rom, transgender, nu mi-a oferit nimic. Dar nu sunt trist din cauza asta. Adică m-a afectat puțin, dar... Oricum visez la mai mult. Sim că merit să fiu pe scenă, merit să lupt pentru dreptate și într-o zi poate să vă face dreptate. Bărăiescul ăsta e un proiect care... But is it like a psychedelic forest? With this, I don't know what's going on here. It's a... Urmează un party de tech. <laughs> da, da, e... <yeah. laughs> But that would be something, you know, it was unt, 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 yeah. Cred că vor să promoveze chestia asta de natură. Yeah. Despre cum oamenii distrug pădurea. Poate asta vrea să fie. Da. Eram un copil inofensiv. Acum e sete. Mi-e sete, jur. Și nu-i bine să-i înjur. Făcuți morții, măți. Aproape începe ploaia. Aproape le mei șarpele, îl văd când închid ploapele. Văd tot atât de clar, atât de limpede, nu mă lăsa. After a break in the afternoon, catching my breath, the night time was set for a visit to the alternative bar, which turned out not only to be a bar, but also a theater and a museum. Your place here and uh, it seems like the essence of uh, culture here in uh, Timisoara. I'm glad that you call this place like being an essence. <laughs> we never thought that it's an essence, but there are lots of people when speaking about it, when regarding about it, they are telling us that it's a bubble of Eastern Europe because it's like an intergalactic place where people from all over the world and not only this world are coming. We started back in 2005 with an independent theater called Aoleu and back then we were play our uh, we've been playing our shows in a small garage, 19 square meters and the courtyard. 
And after four years, back in 2009, uh, we moved here and we realized that we cannot keep an entire theater only with the theater with the, the tickets because we uh, didn't used to work with state money. And we decided to open a cafe along with the theater, which uh, after several years we realized that it, is the, it was the best idea we could have. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, back in 2015, uh, we decided to open the Museum of uh, Communist Consumer. So there's a community between a bar where no regular people are coming to have a cafe or whatever, a museum, which sounds like a very pretentious uh, cultural institution, and also a theater. And for me, this is the coolest community possible regarding arts and culture in this Babylon town, Timisoara. The Museum of the Communist Consumer is in sixth place of the TripAdvisor platform in the preferences of tourists coming to Timisoara. The name of the museum, because it's called the, the Museum of uh, Communist Consumer, and it's, it's a little bit uh, funny to call uh, communist guys being consumers, yeah. because mm -hmm. there was not so much stuff to Yeah, consume. I think the one thing we, we got to know about communism in the West, in Norway, was, you know, okay the, the oppression you know and uh, the, the security and these things but what I discovered that maybe in most Norwegian is not aware of is this the, the products that, like things that you were you didn't have access to them uh, in the way we had some other freedom to it yeah because we were better in security than you <laughs> 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 yeah the access was it, it was not uh, like this for all the period of the communist regime uh -huh. it started in late 70s when Ceausescu wanted to pay the national debt uh -huh. and that's the, the moment when the Romanians every Romanians couldn't fight in, uh, find in uh, okay. stores like uh, milk and basic so products or whatever. Yeah, because everyone, everything was for export. Yes. Well, tell me the story about these fish. I heard they were very popular. Yeah, can I just bring one here? I can, can, I, can I take one and hold one? Yes, of course. The, the coolest thing about them is that you cannot find two the, the, the same because they were, uh, been, yeah, the, they were handmade and the, let's call them the artisans which uh, did them. Uh, had this liberty of doing every model with different colors and that's that's why they are cool because they look alike but they're not ah, yes. they're not the same but so. everybody had them small. yes everybody had them yes were, this was made in romania <laughs> yes yes mm. they are all romanian products must be such a paradox growing up in a country where you actually produce everything you know, but, but still there is this limitation. Uh, yeah, but it's it's a little a uh, little uh, it's a big discussion about producing everything. Ceausescu tried to did it. Uh -huh. He said, uh, from now on we will produce everything, from water to uh, God. Uh -huh. Imagine whatever. Uh, but it, of course, it was not it, it was not possible because he he tried to do it, but he was not prepared for it. My grandfather he wrote a book on Romania in 1980. Okay. So when I came to Romania, I kind of had it as a, it was a bit of a history book, you know, and uh, I think you write something about that, that Romania came, I think this was maybe in the 60s, 70s, that it came into a dilemma because the speed of the development in infrastructure, yeah. it was faster than like the, the uh, shall we say, the intellectual capital yes. managed to maintain what was there, so they kind of fall on crippled on the surface. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, it was exactly like this and it was about the, the quality of the products because if you take a close look at, at this car, for example, uh -huh. you can see that they, they don't fit together. Ah, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. When we say communist, you uh, all of a sudden you see red, yeah. you see a star yeah. and the uh, hammer and you know, yes, you yeah. know that it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, an image it's for three mm -hmm. seconds. And afterwards, you go down here and you see a telephone, some toys and yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And that, that image is uh, Blur yes, it's it's, blurring, yeah, it's yeah, disappearing. Yeah, yeah. It's like, and mm -hmm. yeah, it's not about the... I, I keep telling that it's not about uh, politics. It's not related to politics. It's just related to a common memory that yeah. the ordinary people used yeah. to have. The independent Aulau Theatre also operates here. And uh, stay at, at the alternative bar and in front row seats at the evening's play. And even though I'm not quite fluent in Romanian yet, I enthusiastically enjoyed it, laughed a lot and had a very good time during the evening's theatre play. Quite a few days have passed since I arrived in Timisoara. 
I'm saturated with impressions after days of meeting people, deepening my understanding of the multicultural symbiosis of the city, while all the time learning about the complex history of the city's past. It got me thinking about how my grandfather must have felt coming to Romania all of that time ago. What would he think about my trip? And how would he see Romania now, after more than 40 years since he was here? The Millennium Church was built to commemorate the 1000 year anniversary of the formation of the Hungarian state in 996, hence the name Millennium. The construction, in Neo-Roman style, began on October 4th in 1896 and was finished in 1901. The project was carried out by the Hungarian architect Lajos Ibel. The first time I enter into a you know, worship place of the Catholic uh, uh, religion uh, since his passing and uh, yeah, that just came back to me when I entered this uh, space. And he, um, when he passed, uh, which kind of was my, I got to learn later was my starting point to come to here to Romania. He, he was uh, buried in a Catholic uh, church in Norway. Um, and uh, which is not typical for a Norwegian. I mean, it's typically Protestant. And I remember his uh, the ceremony for him. It was uh, was special for me. It was this flash of light that I caught somehow. And uh, ever since his funeral, I had this kind of premonition that he's uh, you know behind the scenes a little bit somehow uh, or connected to my journey to Romania. You know kind of mystical way somehow. And uh, yeah, coming here today in this Catholic church here and uh, I kind of get this feeling over me again. That I wanted to maybe it's here a little bit, you know, using the church as a conduit. So. Let's not dwell solely on the past and let's visit Suada and Edward Agaki, a couple clearly headed for stardom. Suada is a trainer and a personal development consultant. Famous not only all over Romania, but also online with over 80,000 followers. Suara is Serbian and her husband is a sailor, originally from Constanza, Romania. I've been curious about the, the Serbian community here also in, in Romania, in Timisoara. When I uh, grew up here in Timisoara, mm -hmm. my mother is Serbian and mm -hmm. my father is Romanian. And uh, the most beautiful memories that I can have from this community, let's say, it's the the music, because I have this music in my blood. Just and the, the Serbian, the Serbian no, music no. and the dances also. So the best memories that I have was when I was dancing, mm. always dancing the Serbian music. So, I'm wow. a face reader, specialist in face reading uh, from many, many years. And I wrote the book, Face Reading Techniques, that is unique in Romania, being written by a Romanian author. And also the tarot deck that I launched uh, this, uh, the last year, it's called Maktub Tarot. Mm -hmm. And it's not, let's say, to, to see the future, it's studying the symbolism. Tell me and choose from here the card that you love the most and one card that you don't like at all. Only looking at the images. You don't have to tell me why you don't yes. like and why do you like. Only show me with your finger. This I like. So you like the magician? And this I uh, and don't like or don't the respect. The devil. Yes. Uh -huh. Good. The magician, as a symbol, means that uh, it's someone who likes to make heaven from what he has. Wow. The devil card, if you don't like, the cards are not good or bad in the meaning, let's say. But if you don't like the devil card, that means that you don't like the addiction. Because somehow you are afraid of something that can become bigger and bigger. Creating something from nothing can come and make you addicted. So in a point of your life, even if you love something, you will cut by yourself. Wow, I'm just become silent and this is a lot of information. But I just want, want to end with something. Uh, you Romanians seem very open to this information uh, in general. So we call it the mystical dimension or the esoteric dimension. and. Uh, what do you what do you think? Is it, is it true? Are Romanians open to this? Uh, yes, we are. Romanians are true, truly believers, mm -hmm. and they uh, they are very religious mm -hmm. in general. And I think uh, this 
mindset can help uh, people very much to search even uh, outside the religion uh, yeah. dogma or whatever the they are spiritual doing. dimension yes. yes you came here in Timisoara to discover about uh, let's say some roots from your family and you are going back to the past but don't forget to go yeah. back back to the future that's very true uh as we say also this this journey I'm on now was is connected to my past. Uh, my grandfather was uh, a, a journalist and an author in Norway, and uh, he he was in Romania in the in the 70s and 80s, and he 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 wrote a book on Romania. He told me very clearly uh, in some kind of communication I had with him after he passed that uh, don't go in my shoes. But okay, the path is there, kind of. It is laid a little bit, but go in your own shoes, in your own path. The encounter with Agakis gave me a lot to digest. So I let myself loose and roamed around Timisoara's streets, contemplating the mystical side of life. Spirituality and religion is certainly alive in this part of the world. I had even heard rumors about an Arabic community in town and headed to Brancovano Street in Timisoara. Unmistakably, I recognized the heat and soul of the Arabic merchants and realized I was in the area of the city's bazaar. Here you can find senior Arab citizens who came to Timisoara during the communist period. One of them is a Syrian gentleman named Ziad El Mazalmeh, who invited me to an authentic Arabic coffee in the ASD bazaar. He came to Romania in 1987 as a student. His wife is Romanian and he's also the president of the Free Syria Association. Uh, well, how is it for you as a foreigner? I mean, not you're Romanian now, but how is it for you to live in this multicultural... Uh... We live uh, and uh, have relation, it's very good relation with another culture. For example, in, uh, in every uh, day, special day for uh, Christians, uh, for uh, yes. Muslims, for yes, yes. Uh, you die. It's very good yes. here, and yeah. we particip participate with him together. together. Uh, yes, I, I can't wait to learn more about this also because the way I also understand Romania is this this fusion of all these culture, ethnicities, and also religion is nothing new for Romania. It goes. Back, uh, I, I guess, also with the Arabic world from, from the Ottomans. For Norway, you know, it's a little bit new uh, still yeah. from maybe 1960s, 70s, where we started to have uh, other cultures coming to us. Look, in, in Romania, all the cultures, uh, cultures is, uh, live uh, together. Sia insisted that I join him for a ride in his car to visit Timisoara's only mosque. I gracefully welcomed the invitation as I had never had the opportunity to visit a mosque before the most important prayer of the week takes place on Fridays from 1 p.m., exactly when we arrived. The mosque got packed full of people in matters of minutes after our arrival, a sign that the number of Muslims in Timisoara has grown in recent years. Growing up in the backdrop of a Christian society, I suffered the same ignorance as many of my peers, with an extremely limited awareness of Islam and Muslims. Observing the packed room of praying people, I realized they were all of different nations and skin color. It made me stop and think how much bigger and more complex the world is than I acknowledge. <laughs> At the end, I got to meet with the Imam of Timisoara, the Egyptian Alim Swam. So, uh, thank you. First of all, thank you so much for letting me participate in the ceremony. I don't know, I don't speak Arabic, <laughs> but I can feel, uh, I felt the energy in my body. And also, maybe you can say, uh, explain me a little bit about uh, the role of the Imam in this community. Yeah. دوري إننا أجمع الناس ونقدم المساعدة هكذا يأمرنا الدين الشيعي. The role of Imam here to the the come together all the Muslims and to be very a good man. And the second role 
he want to uh, say that the if you want to uh, integration in this community then this in this country thank you so much thank for you. accepting me thank and i felt very you. welcome here okay. thank very you. welcome okay. thank you so thank much you. welcome welcome Oops. as the prayer finished and all the people exited the building I was greeted with handshakes, smiles, and a feeling of deep hospitality and respect. Maybe just because I was an obvious white blonde Scandinavian guy who decided to visit their sacred space. In the end, it was me who left with a great sense of humility and a warm smile on my face. I knew Timisoara had a special story, being the initial place where the insurgents began. The 1989 revolution, somehow shrouded in mystery and obscurity, is something I needed to learn more about. And my luck delivered again. I actually got to meet the person who started it all, involuntarily or not. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm Christopher. Yes, I'm Stefan Iordanescu. Nice to meet you. From Timisoara. Uh, Stefan Iordanescu, a former theater director, fought for Romania's freedom in 1989, both in Timisoara and in the capital Bucharest. He was the one who actually started the revolution in Timisoara on the 15th of December 1989. It started here because uh, by mistake by I was here by mistake I saw uh, here in on that uh, entrance of the, the building uh, yes the door of the building uh, one old guy kept by two strong people something very strange happened to me I I went to them and I um, it was clear that, that they were from the security, you uh -huh. know, from the Securitate. It was clear. I, I know them, yes, uh -huh. how they looked. Uh -huh. And uh, I asked them, uh, papers, uh, give me the papers for the control. You asked them? Yes. <laughs> I asked him, are you hungry? Are you hungry? Oh. Uh, take my head in your mouth. <laughs> oh, yes. And yes. you knocked him down? Yes. Wow. All the people around are, the, the 50 yes, ish people yes, around they they enter wow. in the fight too. On that moment, I took my wife and told her, Let's go quick, <laughs> <laughs> let's go ah. quick. So, somebody uh, phoned to me at home and they, uh, told me, You know, it started at Turkish. Uh, in ah. front of Turkish, a young guy or 17 olds uh, start the fight with the Securitate. Sec <laughs> that guy of uh, 17 years old uh, oh, was you. me, but oh. I was 31. Ah, yeah, it, it was the igniting point. Igniting wow. point. And it was with your, uh, yes. are you hungry? Yes. Oh, that is... Are uh, you hungry? If that wasn't enough, Stefan decided to take the fight to Bucharest. He left on the 19th of December with a friend and took part in the Bucharest revolt. This guy, Ioan Monoran, was one of the guys who, who stopped the trams. For me, this city has an underlying spirit of revolution and art. And roaming around in the streets, it's impossible not to catch all the beautiful murals. Hello, excuse me. Hello. Hello. Speak English? Yes, yes. Very good. Can you tell me who this artist, these murals are? Yes, by mistake. It's, it was me and uh, some friends of mine. Oh, yes? yes. <laughs> Hello. Hello. My name is Christopher. Hello. Hi. Brooks. My name is Christopher. Nice to meet you. He's also a graffiti artist, but uh, here I work with uh, some other friends. It was a joke about uh, our politician, corrupt politician, but uh, put upon a story, a traditional Romanian story. The, the goat, yeah, the goat with the three kids and the wolf comes. Maybe you could yeah. tell me more about how the street culture here is, you know, with uh, the work you do. This is kind of, are you being accepted <laughs> or is it... Uh... Here is the, the city where I started to do street art and uh, murals, being a student. Uh -huh. uh, so I'm a bit nostalgic as well. It, it was in, back in the days, it was a uh, kicking city out of Romania with uh, the graffiti scene and all this, um, electronic music, you know, uh -huh. the uh, 
the people, of... the people from Bucharest were coming to see what's going on here ah, because yes, it was, it really was kind on of such a boiling here. Exactly, ah. exactly. It was the, the hot spot. So uh, I guess the Inshara really has also this uh, underground So this kind of, kind of culture yes. underground kind of was booming here also, not just Bucharest. But yes, uh, but nowadays it's all mainly in the mainstream. Like uh, projects like this are uh, made wow. on European money, you know. Wow. <laughs> it's like the column of uh, Brincuz, Brincuzi, yeah, 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 <laughs> the yeah. infinite column, uh, yeah. but he transformed it uh, into Rubik's Cube. Lula. It's this combination uh, between organic stuff, like uh, the nature of uh, wings that are uh, completely organic and uh, the specific of the school that plays with uh, robotics here and a lot of digital stuff. So it's like uh, in the middle. After meeting all of these wonderful and creative people of Timisoara, I got curious to know the persons who make it all work. The people behind the curtain who have worked so hard these past years to make sure Timisoara's artists get into the spotlight, Timisoara being the European capital of culture. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. My name is Christopher. Likewise, Alexandra. Can you tell me a little bit what, what your role in this um, project is? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm trying to manage one of the implementation structures. So you're part of the administration of the, the uh, project? The one uh, on behalf of the municipality. Then we are hosting the curatorial team mm -hmm. uh, that is in charge of the artistic coherence of the program. Uh -huh, I see. We are in charge with the bigger representative events like the opening and the closing mm -hmm, event. Mm -hmm. This is a project that basically goes the whole year, is, is, is that correct? Or? It goes the whole year and it has uh, uh, an even even longer process. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for implementation <laughs> exactly. and the after effects. Exactly. Uh -huh. Now it's only the, the celebration, uh -huh. you know. Is this the kind of logo for the uh, yes, event? Yes, yes, yes. I'm not the graphic designer of it, but of course uh, uh, it's, it's um, um, you know, a message to um, step out from passivity and be a more proactive, you know, shine your, your light uh, and light up your city. Uh, it's um, a message to every citizen to uh, be part of, contribute, take a more active role. Take a more active role. Get your city lit. These words stuck with me. Romanians love their markets and Sunday is the best day to go to the flea market. We went to Mahala market, the biggest market in Timisoara. And I was told that today they will visit around 9,000 people here. Quite impressive. Here I met with the market director which offered me a tour around the endless rows of various goods. This business exists here, over 30 years ago, maybe even 40. I don't know how to give all the details, because we weren't here. People come here to sell machines, some to sell food, some to sell, I know, old clothes, old uh, it's dictator Romanian, da, Ceausescu. He, he was always on the front page, yes? yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know that. Bot, ca și mie mi se pare interesantă. Le cumpăr. Auzi, ci că se cumpără foarte multe din astea. Cât e una din astea? But, uh, hey, oh, it's it's interesting. For you. For me? Yes, yes. Ah, thank you very much. No, pl noi plătim, dar e pentru tine. Ah, ok, ok, thank you very much. At the market, I met Cornelio Vaida, known in Timisoara for his civic spirit. He comes to every protest, being a true revolutionary spirit. He shed some more illuminating details about the intricacies of the revolution and also how important the bootleg music market was during the regime. I'm just looking for some records, ah. also if I can find something interesting, but unfortunately nothing uh, to be bought and kept. I see. Oh, yeah. But I noticed in Romania this, this market culture, this bazaar culture is 
very much yeah. part of your... To, uh, it's our culture before the revolution of uh, 89, because uh, in that period, uh, uh, in this kind of markets, we could find anything what we couldn't find in uh, shops or in... I the, see, I see in the, in the communist... Exactly, oh, see, exactly. Timisoara, it was a multicultural uh, uh, city, and it still it is. Uh -huh. uh, mainly, a lot, um, everyone had a relative in Germany or in France or in, in USA, and they were sending coffee, uh, soap, uh -huh. uh, discs, you know. In Romania, we had the only bloody revolution from all the Eastern Europe. In no other country, I see, I see. they were victims, only here. The revolution practically started uh, in the 16th of December, 89, uh -huh. and we have been alone without any other approach from other cities uh, quite a week until in Bucharest they raised up and uh, they kicked out uh, Ceausescu I see, wow. in 22 of December. So it was just like a fire that started and just spread somehow yeah. eventually. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. But Timisoara, we declared ourselves in 20 of December the first uh, free city of, free of communist city of Romania. Wow. And Ceausescu was still in, uh, in power in Bucharest in that time. You can't go to the Mahala market and leave without eating some traditional Romanian mitch. For the inexperienced ones, a mitch can be described as a sausage without skin. Like a traditional kebab, only without the spices. Typically made from pork and sheep, the best meat you'll find in town happens to be here at Mahala. My trip to Timisoara is coming to an end, but I could not leave before I had experienced the Adina Pintilia exhibition at the Kunsthal Bega Modern Art Gallery. Timisoara, being the European capital of culture, has its perks, okay, okay. as the exhibition has only previously been shown at the Venice Art Biennale. Strikingly enough, one of the main subjects of this project and exhibition is also Norwegian. Uh, no, no, go with the blue dots, just like look directly to the eye and focus on the eye, okay? Now they're close to you, right? And you can try to touch them now. And when you manage to touch them, uh, the, the screen is going to go black and then you'll be embodying their body. Don't be afraid to, to try and move around. It was, it was, that was again a you know, body experience somehow. It yeah, surprised me a lot. To, to other people that, that stayed longer, like 15 minutes or 20 minutes, you didn't stay that long. Mm -hmm. But other people that stayed longer actually kind of started feeling different things like they could feel their body like some some guy told me that he kind of felt the breasts when he was inside in a, a woman's body he kind of felt everything oh, wow. like it wasn't there but it could feel <laughs> it, it's it's weird how what the brain can do there's this feeling of compassion kind of uh, i mean it's very raw uh, but at the same time you know the, this feeling of compassion comes or, or yeah because humility. because they let you in as you 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 see that when when you got in the room all the characters were were, were fixing you with their stare so they were looking at you intensely mm -hmm. so uh, it's like you have to be watched to be able to watch them yeah. So they're letting you inside their intimacy and they're letting you inside their life and seeing them vulnerable. So then you should be at least a bit vulnerable when you yeah. enter. So inspiring. You may wonder why I, a Norwegian, came to cherish Romania so much and eventually settled down here. Ever since I was just a child, I was curious about the world. It must have been fate guiding me to that choice. Because discovering Timisoara and Romania has been one of the biggest revelations of my life. Let's check on the black black sheep of the family. It's coming from another country, another culture, and then just realizing your dream.